Welcome to ERC Tipsnology. In this video, we will be learning Multisim for beginners. Let's start! NI Multisim is an electronic schematic capture and simulation program which is part of circuit design programs along with NI Ultiboard. One of the few circuit design programs to employ the original Berkeley SPICE based software simulation. How do we use the Multisim? First, you open the Multisim design and then you will see the Multisim startup screen. And from here, you will click File New and you will see this screen and you will just select Blank and click on Create. After that, you can put, for example, a voltage source by clicking on Place followed by Component and then you will see the database and the group and the family. What you do is you click on the group. After clicking on the group, you will select sources, for example, here, sources. And then you will be shown the power sources, signal voltage sources, and so on. So we will choose power sources. And then on the right side, you will see the different power supplies and even the ground. So we select DC power. After that, you will see the battery symbol or the DC power supply symbol and then click OK. And there you go. You have your DC power supply or DC voltage or voltage DC. And then just click the mouse on the screen and drop the uh, power supply and you will see that its name is V1 so what you do is you double click on the symbol and you it will show you a dialog box that says DC power now at the top you will see label display value fault and pins what you do to change the name of the voltage source is to click on label and type VS for example then you may also click on the value and you will see the value of the voltage as 10 volts and you can change it to whatever value you want. Now let's play, we can also put another component not by clicking on place but clicking on this place basic button, this one. So instead of clicking the, the first way that we place the component, we can use this. We may click on this button, the place basic button, and it will also do the same. Now, whatever was the last uh, component that you have chosen, that will be displayed on your screen. So if you want to choose the resistor, for example, you have to click on the basic over here. When it displays place basic button, click it, and then after that, you click here whatever you want. For example, maybe you want the resistor, so you go down here on the resistor, like this. So you select resistor, and then you may type the value of the component. If it is a standard value and it is available, you can just select it. Or else you may assign another value for your resistance, and the symbol of the resistance will be displayed, and then click on OK, and uh, you will see this on your screen. The resistor will be there with the name R1 and the 4.7 kilo ohms was just typed by me. You may type the value that you, you want or you may select any other resistor value. Now since this is horizontally displayed, what we do is we right click this, right click the mouse and you will see a shortcut menu and then you select rotate 90 degrees clockwise. When you click that one, or you can also use the keyboard, Control R. And what will happen to your resistor? Before it was horizontal, now it will become vertical, like this. And then, you may put the other resistors as you like. So, maybe if you are listening right now, and you are, are watching this video, and you have a multisim, you may uh, copy this example, put R1. R2 on the right, R3 on the left, R4 at the top, R5 on the right, and put two voltage sources, but put the name not as V1 or V2, not as VS1 or VS2, but we may put E1 for 10 volts and E2 for 10 volts. So we are using 
5 resistors, 4.7K, 6.8K, 10K, 22K, and 33K. And all you have to do is just, to just click the end of the resistor and then drag the mouse or use the mouse pointer to point to the other component. And uh, you may connect all of them together. So to do that, we also need to, uh, by the way, we need to put a ground. So in the component, you select the ground or G-R-O-U-N-D and you will see this symbol for the ground and click OK and then just drop the ground there and connect it at the bottom of E1. And uh, after the connections, you will see something like this. Maybe it will just take one to two minutes before you can connect all of this. But if you're really slow, I think five minutes is enough. Then we have to measure, for example, the value of the voltage. So on the right side of the panel, you will see a multimeter symbol like this. And then when you click it, it will display a some sort of a transparent multimeter, which is not yet uh, displayed there fully because it's still a temporary location so just position the multimeter wherever you want it to be and after that you may click that area and you will see this one it has a greenish color and uh, at the top you will see xmm1 so this is the multimeter one and what we do is we connect for example the positive the positive to the positive of the battery and the negative we connect it to the to the negative of the or on the lower part of the resistor or you may connect the positive on the resistor and the negative of the multimeter on the negative of the voltage source anyway when the multimeter shows negative you may change the positive and negative polarities now after you have connected the uh, multimeter on the place where you want to measure the voltage you have to double click the multimeter here after double clicking or clicking the mouse twice, the left side or the left mouse uh, uh, button, then you will see this. But it does not display any number. And you, by default, or the normal position is that it's a voltmeter and there's a line here which represents DC. So right now it's ready to be used as a voltmeter. So we have to run the system to simulate it. So we will click at the top button a greenish triangle here like a flag and with the green color and what you do is click that button it means run the system or you may press F5 and the value of the voltage that you want to measure here which is actually the voltage source will be displayed on your multimeter so you see here 10 volts so it's correct because this uh, voltage source is really 10 volts now sometimes you will not see 10 volts you will see negative or minus 10 in that case all you have to do is to change the position of the positive and negative terminal so you can uh, click this wire and delete it and exchange the position or uh, exchange the position of the plus and the minus probes or wires of the multimeter now you may also double click the wire and after double clicking the wire you may change the color of its uh, wire so you from red you may give it give it a black color or you can choose any other color over here and then just click apply and uh, like here i put all of the uh, multimeters here i put xmm1 or multimeter number one for to measure the voltage source one i used multimeter two for measuring r uh, the voltage across r1 i use mm4 xmm4 to measure the voltage across r4 xmm3 to measure the voltage across r3 xmm5 to measure the voltage across r5 xmm6 to measure the voltage across r2 and uh, when we run the system it will display values here at the of course at the bottom of course you need to double click all of them so that the multimeter will be shown on your screen or else you will not see the values now you will notice that the multimeter number two is giving us negative 3.043 that is because the position of the plus and minus of that multimeter may not be correct so the positive here is supposed to be on the negative or at the bottom and the negative 
is supposed to be at the top. So if you do that, then the voltages will become positive. Now, this has something to do with the analysis of the of the direction of current, but remember that we are using the uh, conventional current flow where we enter the uh, voltage source on the negative side and then we go out on the positive side. That's uh, conventional current flow or positive going to the negative. But if uh, the display here is negative, we will just uh, exchange the position of the plus and minus of our voltage uh, meters or voltmeters. And also make sure that all the meters that you're using is selected with that V button to make it as a voltmeter or else you will be wrong. That's how easy it is to measure the, the voltages using the multimeter of the multisim. But uh, remember that one of the probes must be on the left and one must be on the right or up or down of the particular component. You will also never cut anything. You will just put the probes or the plus and minus wires of the voltmeter on the right side or left side of the component if it is horizontal. And if it is vertical, then at the top and at the bottom. Like the multimeter number 2, the plus is at the top of R1 and the minus is at the bottom of R1. Now on, the, on R4, the plus is on the left side of R4 and the minus is on the right side of R4. Now moving on, let's cancel all of the voltmeters now and let's see how will we measure the current. So to measure the current, we will cut the, the wire between R1 and R4 here. We can cut from here at the top of R1. We may also cut at the bottom of R1. Now I chose to cut at the top of R1 between R1 and R4 and this is what happens. And then I just put one multimeter over here and the positive on the R1 and the negative on the R4 or on the right side over here. Now, double-click this multimeter, it will be like this. And remember, it's uh, V by default, or it's normally V. So we, we cancel the V and we click on A because we will measure the current or the ampere. Or we will be using the ammeter. Ampere meter or ammeter. That's why it's important you have to click A. By the way, do not click the sinusoidal waveform symbol here. This means AC. And the line, this means DC. Ohms and decibel must not be clicked also. So the blue color is on the A. That's it. And when you run the system, then you will be uh, seeing the number. But right now, what I did is I connected also for, I want to measure what's the current coming out of uh, E1. So I cut the, the wire between R1 and E1 and put our MM6 or XMM6. And uh, for the current flowing through R4, I cut the right side of R4 and uh, the other side I connected here. Then the R3, I cut the wire here and connected the plus at the bottom of R3 and the minus on the negative side or on the common ground. Same thing with R5, I cut it over here and connect the, the ground to the negative and the positive to the resistor. R2, I cut it before R2 at the top and uh, the Negative is on the R5. By the way, you may flip the the uh, meters when you double click it, or I mean when you when you right click it, you will see flip horizontally. That's why you will see my minus here is not on the right. Here the minus is on the right. It depends so that there will be no spaghetti-like uh, connections, you know, and it should be clear to to whoever is looking on your uh, on your multi-sim circuit. Now also, because we want to measure the current, don't forget to click A on all of the meters, A, and don't forget that we are doing DC, so we should click the line over here to represent DC. And well, you, of course, you need to run it, so when you run it, you click the run button over here at the top, and you will see the numbers here. We have how much here? around 52.842 microamperes. Uh, this is for multimeter number one. This is the current flowing through R1. And on multimeter number six, we will notice that the current is also 52.842 because the R1 is in series with your voltage source. Therefore, the current will really be the same. 
Now on R3, the the MM2 or multimeter number two displays 975.155 kilo amperes. Oh, it's so big. The current flowing here is so big in the uh, 10 kilo 10 kilo ohms or resistor. That's the effect over here because this is letter K. And then we have uh, on MM4, which is the resistor number four, we have 52. Point 832 microamperes and so on. So these are the the ways or on how to measure the current using the multimeter on uh, in our multisim. Now let's cancel everything and I want to show you another way to measure the current is by simply clicking on the probe at the at the toolbar you will see here V and then A you click on A and that even if you don't click it, just move the mouse over it and it will already display current, the word current. Click it and you will see this. Now this PR1 means probe number one and you will see a lot of information here at the top. So what you do is you double click that uh, probe and then we can change the, the uh, properties of this particular probe. For example, right now you will see this, it's being used as a current probe. And you will see here general, appearance, triggers, and parameters. Now what we do is we click on the appearance and we may change the background color of the box. We can also change the color of the font or the text. We can also select the font. Uh, we want to make it bold or italic. And of course, you can change the size of the, of the font. We will be doing that as you like, whichever values or styles do you want now on the other hand you on the other side we have to click on custom of the parameters because we don't really need all of this information so those with yes here after clicking custom we may just cancel them and make it make them no and instead we just need for example the current or the voltage or, or the, i mean the current dc so we will keep the current dc only so if you do that, then you will have something like this. I make the color background blue, the text is black, aerial black, uh, and uh, the size is 12. And then I make everything here no for the parameters. And I just uh, selected uh, yes for current DC. And then I will click on apply at the bottom. And there you go, you will see something like this now. But there's no number yet, therefore you run the system you click the run button and you will see 647 microamperes flowing on that uh, probe or on that uh, between R1 and R4. And you don't even need to cut the wire, you see? So this is the advantage of the probes. So right here we have uh, placed uh, probe number one, probe number six, and probe number three to measure the currents flowing on these wires. Now to put everything there, this will be the result. Now, with regards to the negativity of or negative symbols, this has just something to do with the direction of the uh, of the current. Is it going to the left or to the right, or the way you connected your probe? That's why, if you want a realistic way to measure the current, then you may use this one, because here this is the real way that we do it in the laboratory. For example, we cut the wire and we put plus and minus. But the problem with this way is the method is uh, long. You know, we have to cut the wires and so on. But this is more accurate. I mean, it's very clear which one you are measuring. So I prefer to use that if I'm not in a hurry. Okay, after that, we can uh, also use another another button, the volt voltmeter or voltage probe because i have told you that we we can use the probe right so you can click on this one the v then you will see this uh, v and you can also change the appearance and the parameters but let's keep it as voltage and let's not change the name of the probe anymore and because we are using this uh, it always refer or the reference of the negative will always be the ground therefore if you will be using this probe you need to add another another uh, another device or another uh, another value which is the the reference reference or ref 
So if you will go back, if you will go back here, you will see that there is something like a a V with a color green here. That's the reference for the negative of the of the probes of the voltmeter. So I put my voltmeter on the right of R4 and I put the reference on the left. And this reference name is ref1. In other words, when you click the voltmeter here, V probe, you have to change the negative reference, negative reference of the probe. The negative reference of the probe by default or normally is ground. So you choose ref1. Then if you put another reference number two, reference number three uh, along the, the wires, then you have to refer to it. For example, if I want to measure the voltage on R across R1, I put the V probe at the top of R1 and I put a reference at the bottom of R1. And the reference that I use is Ref3. After putting Ref3, still the probe PR1 is still referring to the ground. Therefore, you have to double click the PR1 and you go to the, uh, to the general and uh, go to negative reference probe and select here PR2. Okay, not P, I mean not PR2, it should be not PR2 but uh, uh, reference 3. It should not be PR2 but reference 3 for that one. Okay, so maybe that's the wrong uh, reference. I should have put ref3. Anyway, when you measure the voltage of this, it will display the values of the voltages along the, or across the, across the uh, resistors or the voltage sources. Now, if you want, you may also, uh, you may also use another, another meter, which is the power meter but it's like a power probe so you choose the power probe and you can see the wattage or the powers of the uh, devices or components that we connect in our circuit look at this see we can see the the power dissipated by the or used by the components and of course there's another one also where you can combine the current and the voltage together in this way the current and the voltage are together in one probe and if you go back with our powerpoint let's go back and you will see that over here this one this one the the one with a and the v that will be the combined values of voltage and current and when you drop it over here it will be like this so i think this is faster because the current and the voltage will be displayed together but the problem here is that if uh, it may not be as accurate as what you are expecting because uh, you have to be careful on on these uh, measurements that's why i still prefer the use of the plus and minus probe of the multimeters so that's it for the multisim for beginners i hope that you like this video or you support us through your subscription so please subscribe like and comment and i hope you learned something about multisim and this will be enough for you to start using the multisim thank you so much for watching and have a nice day